Hi everyone, this is Richard. I'm very happy to welcome you to our Grace Lessons. This is part one of our Life Purpose Series. Bakit sobrang mahalaga na maintindihan natin kung ano ang ating life purpose? It is very important to understand our life purpose kasi sa purpose nakadepende ang value ng buhay. Ibig sabihin, if there is a great purpose to life, then life is valuable. If there is no purpose to life, walang halaga ang buhay. Connected din siya sa meaning. If there is a great purpose to life, then there is a great meaning sa life. Makabuluhan ang buhay. Meron talaga siyang halaga. Pero kapag wala naman palang purpose ang buhay, then there is no meaning to life. Kaya, kapag walang purpose at walang meaning, life is just movement. Para lang siyang activities, pero wala namang reason. Para siyang uh, events lang siya, ano? para lang siyang mga efforts na lagi nating ginagawa, pero wala namang direction, wala naman siyang kinapupuntahan. Kaya, pag walang purpose, pag walang meaning, if there's no direction, if there is no reason, Life is is pointless. Life is useless at saka hindi naman talaga siya importante. Kaya pag nawala ka o kaya nawala ang buhay mo, parang wala namang nawala kasi wala naman siyang meaning. Kasi wala naman siyang purpose. So when there is no solid connection sa purpose, sa meaning at saka sa direction ng buhay, this is very very painful. And this is very confusing. And this is actually the reason why many people, they suffer from depression, from fear, from worry. At saka, ito ang dahilan why a lot of people hindi maganda ang kanilang mental health. Kaya, importante na maintindihan natin kung ano ang ating life purpose. Now, we have good news kasi God, our maker, our creator, He makes everything with purpose. Ang bawat puno, ang bawat halaman, mayroong purpose kung bakit niya ginawa. Every insect, every creature, every animal, mayroong reason kung bakit niya ginawa. At ikaw, kung buhay ka ngayon, there is a reason why you are alive. There is an amazing plan for you. Kung walang creator, kung walang purpose, kung walang designer, then walang amazing significance or importance kahit sa anumang bagay at sa kahit kanino mang tao. Pati yung pagkaanak mo, accident lang siya. There is no special reason behind it. Kaya wala mang dahilan para siya i-celebrate. Kaya importante in this lesson, ma-discover natin yung mga sagot. Why was I born? Why am I here? Why do I exist? And as we discover the important answers to these questions, madidiskubri natin yung ating amazing significance, yung purpose ng buhay natin, at yung meaning kung bakit tayo nag-e-exist. Let's start with our verse found in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 8. At ang sabi, God is love. Meaning, Si God, hindi lang siya author ng love, hindi lang siya origin ng love, hindi lang siya uh, source ng love. He himself is love. Ibig sabihin, love is God's nature, it is God's character, it is God's essence. Kaya lahat ng ginagawa ng Diyos, iniisip ng Diyos, pinaplano ng Diyos, everything, it is loving because it is coming out from love which is the nature of God. Anong kinalaman niyan sa ating life purpose? Our point number one is this. God who is love created us for the purpose of loving us. The reason He created us is to be the objects of His love. To experience His love. Kaya, hindi aksidente yung pag-exist natin, mayroong deliberate reason, and the reason is for us to be loved 
by God para matikman natin, para maranasan natin, para malasap natin yung kanyang pag-ibig. And the wonderful thing is this, yung love na gusto ng Diyos na maranasan natin, hindi siya ordinary kind of love. It's not the same kind of love we see around us. Ang sabi sa 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 8, love never fails. Ito yung love ni God. Hindi nabibigo, hindi nagle-let go, kaya pwede mo siyang maasahan, pwede mo siyang mapanghawakan, pwede mo siyang sandalan. Maraming nangangako ng pag-ibig. Pero napapako yung kanilang pangako. But it is not the same with God's love because it is an unfailing love. Yan ang love na gusto ni God na maranasan mo. Ang sabi naman sa Jeremiah 31.3, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Mayroon bang forever? Sa mga pag-ibig dito sa mundo, walang forever. Pero God's love for you, it is endless. It is never going to end. Hindi siya nawawala, hindi siya maglalaho, kasi it is eternal love. Ito yung gusto ng Panginoon na maranasan mong pag-ibig. And what I want to emphasize sa lesson na to, itong nasa Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. God is able to do infinitely beyond what we ask or think. Yung kaya mong isipin, yung kaya mong uh, hingin sa Diyos, Uh, infinitely beyond that ang kaya niyang gawin para sa'yo. At ang ibig sabihin, yung pinaka kaya mong isipin o ma-imagine na pagmamahal niya, that is not even the beginning of how much He loves you. Infinitely na lampas, lampas, lampas pa doon yung pagmamahal na gusto niya na maranasan mo. Which brings us To point number two, the love God loves us with is beyond anything we're able to imagine. It's beyond anything we're able to conceive and comprehend. Akala natin, naintindihan na natin, gets na natin yung love ni God. Hindi pala, we cannot even begin to really comprehend the infinite love of God. So let me show you something right now which I hope is going to blow your minds away para makita natin, magkaroon man tayo ng konting clue how unfathomable yung infinite love of God. Think of this line as a timeline. Yung one end of it is the present, which is now. Tapos yung kabilang dulo is the past. Okay? So, let's try this exercise. When was 60 seconds ago? Dahil may 60 seconds sa uh, one minute, If you were asked, when was 60 seconds ago? The answer is, it was one minute ago. Pero kapag ang itatanong ko sa iyo ngayon, when was one million seconds ago? One million seconds ago is, it's 12 days ago. Kaya kung merong bata, isinilang 12 days ago. That child is one million seconds old. Kasi one million seconds ago, it's... It's 12 days ago. So, the next question is this. When was 1 billion seconds ago? Huwag ka na mag-compute. Okay? I'll just give you the answer. 1 billion seconds ago, actually, it it's 31.6 years ago. So, i-round off mo, that's 32 years ago. So, kapag ano ka, 32 years old, you're like 1 billion seconds old. If you're 64 years old, you're 2 billion seconds old. Kasi ang 1 billion ay uh, 32 years. But, let's go to the next one. Kailan naman yung 1 trillion seconds ago? So, if 1 million was 12 days ago, 1 billion was 32 years ago, kailan yung 1 trillion seconds ago? And our answer is, it's 29,700 BC. It's like 30,000 years ago. Yan ang, yan ang 1 trillion. Okay? And so, if you have 12 days sa 1 million, Uh, 32 years sa uh, 1 billion and 29,700 BC sa uh, 1 trillion, kailan naman ang 1 quadrillion seconds ago? And the answer is 30,800,000 years ago. 
Yan ang 1 quadrillion. Kaya makikita mo ang laki pala ng difference nung jump, okay, from 1 million to billion, from billion to trillion, at saka yung trillion sa quadrillion. You keep that in mind as we continue to discover how infinite the love of God is. This is a photo of a sunrise and uh, it's a beautiful picture and so with this sunset kasi itong sun it's 93 million miles away from planet earth. Pero pag mag close up ka sa sun it is a giant ball of fire of energy and it's very very hot and according to NASA the power of the sun the energy of the sun it's equivalent to the explosion of 92 billion nuclear bombs all exploding at the same time per second and every second thereafter isang bomb lang nasira ang Hiroshima isang bomb lang nasira ang Nagasaki pero ang power ng sun hindi 100 or 1 million uh, nuclear bombs 92 billion nuclear bombs all exploding at the same time per second and every second thereafter. Kaya kahit napakalayo ng sun, 93 million miles away, ramdam natin yung init, kita natin yung liwanag, at saka talagang na-experience natin yung kanyang energy. That's how powerful the sun is. Now, ipagtabi natin yung earth at saka yung sun. Kung magkatabi yan, you can see how small our planet earth is. Let me ask you a question. Sa palagay mo, how many Earths can you fit inside the sun? Ilang Earth? Ang sagot, 1 million Earth. Kasha ang 1 million na Earth inside the sun. To help us visualize, ano, paano ba yan ma-imagine? You get a rambutan. Tapos, uh, you peel the rambutan. And then imagine this rambutan uh, is planet Earth. And then you get a big bus tire. Pagkatapos, pagtabihin mo yung rambutan at saka yung big tire. Okay? The rambutan, it represents planet Earth and the sun is represented not by the tire. It is represented by the whole bus. Kaya itong napakalaking bus na yan, yan ang uh, nagre-represent the sun ng sun because it can fit like 1 million rambutan. Kaya ganyan kalaki yung sun. But remember, yung sun, it is not a planet, it is a star. And actually, it is one of the smallest stars. Napakarami pang mas malaki kaysa sa sun. One example is Arcturus. Si Arcturus, it's over 16,000 times larger. Kaya makita mo ngayon yung comparison ng sun at saka ng Arcturus. Arcturus, okay? Itong sun natin, na pwedeng magkasya ang 1 million na Earth, maliit lang siya compared kay Arcturus. But Arcturus is not the biggest star. May mas malaking star dyan, si Alpha Scorpi. It is 690 million times bigger than our sun. Kaya ang katabi dyan ni Alpha Scorpi, hindi si sun. Ang katabi niya, si Arcturus. Kapag itatabi mo si sun, halos hindi mo na siya makita because Alpha Scorpi, it is 690 million times larger in volume than our sun. Pero, hindi naman si Alpha Scorpi ang pinakamalaki na star. Mayroong mas malaki pa, si Betelgeuse. Itong si Betelgeuse, ang kasya sa kanya na Earth, hulaan mo, 262 trillion Earths. Hindi million, hindi billion. 262 trillion Earths. How can you imagine that? So, magpapatulong ulit tayo sa rambutan. Imagine the rambutan, it represents the Earth. Ngayon, Ito namang uh, beetle geese, para ma-imagine natin siya, pupunta tayo sa New York, puntahan natin yung Empire State Building, dala natin yung ating rambutan, ilagay sa ground floor, yun ang Earth, and the Empire State Building, pinagpatong-patong na 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 na beses, yun ang laki ng beetle geese. That's how big that star is. Or itong Philippine Arena, punuin mo yan ng rambutan. 
hanggang bubong. Pwede siguro kumuha ka ng uh, uh, tens of thousands of trucks, punuin mo ng rambutan, tapos i-discarga mo dyan sa Philippine Arena, and then you keep on doing it hanggang mapu mapuno siya, hanggang bubong. Pag punong-punong-punong puno na, you remove everything, ilagay mo yan sa, sa vacant lot, Why? Because you're going to fill up the arena again with rambutans up to the ceiling. And after you've, after you've done that, you remove everything, lagay mo sa vacant lot, tapos pupunuin mo siya ulit. You do that 3,000 times. And the amount of rambutan you were able to gather, that is the number of earths you can fit inside beetle geese. Ganun kalaki ang beetle geese. Now, meron pang mas malaki kay beetle geese na star. Si Musifi. Si Musifi, ilan kaya ang kasya na Earth? Hindi million, billion, trillion. 2.7 quadrillion Earths. Wow! Paano mo ngayon yan maiimagine? Pero pupunta na tayo kay Canis Majoris. Canis Majoris is the largest discovered star ng ating mga scientists and it can fit 7 quadrillion Earths. Gano karami ang 7 quadrillion okay, na pwedeng magkasya na Earth dyan sa Canis Majoris. So once again, to help us, we will go to our rambutan which represents the Earth. Ang gagawin mo ngayon, Kanina, pinuno natin yung Philippine Arena, di ba? Doon sa Bulacan. But now, what we're going to do, pupunuin natin the whole province of Bulacan with rambutan. And after we, we've covered Bulacan with uh, rambutan, punuin natin ang Metro Manila or NCR, and then Pampanga, Tarlac, Nueva Ecija, Aurora, La Union, Isabela, Cagayan, Ilocos, and then we go down south sa Batangas, sa Bicol, sa Mindoro, yung buong Palawan. And when you're done with Luzon, you go to the Visayas. Punuin mo ang Leyte, ang Samar, ang Bohol, ang Cebu, ang Negros, ang Panay. When you're done with the Visayas, you go to Mindanao, punuin mo ang Davao, ang Sambuanga, ang Cotabato, Agusan, Lanao, ang Misamis, ang Bukidnon, okay? Ang Surigao, at pag napuno mo na yung 7,100 islands of the Philippines, okay? That is like 1.44 times 10 to the 39 power pieces of rambutan. Ibig sabihin, it's enough rambutan to cover the entire Philippines from Apari hanggang Sulu, Five feet deep. Kaya yung ganun karaming rambutan, ganun karaming earth ang pwedeng magkasya kay Canis Majoris. And this is Canis Majoris, katabi niya, si Sun, hindi mo makita si Sun kasi sobrang liit niya. This Sun, which can fit 1 million earths, which equivalent power is 92 billion nuclear bombs or all exploding at the same time. Ang kasya na sun kay Canis Majoris is 9.3 billion. Kanina, sabi natin, wow, ang laki pala ng sun. Pero in comparison with Canis Majoris, sobrang-sobrang liit niya. So now, maybe you're saying, wow, go Canis Majoris. Go Canis Majoris. Pero ang Canis Majoris naman pala, if you're going to compare it, Sa galaxy natin, which is the Milky Way, Milky Way is our subdivision. Ano? Paghahanapin mo dyan si Canis Majoris, hindi mo siya makikita kasi mas maliit pa siya sa tuldok. Because the Milky Way, from end to end, it is 100,000 light years. Ganun kalawak ang Milky Way. Kaya, ang Canis Majoris, kahit kasya doon, ang 9.3 billion suns, hindi mo naman siya makita kapag ang pinag-uusapan ang Milky Way. Kaya, you are now odd as to how big the Milky Way is. Pero ang Milky Way, in comparison to other galaxies, gaya ng IC 1011, it is 6 million light years wide. Kaya pag ikukumpara mo si Milky Way kay IC1011, ang liit-liit lang ni Milky Way. But it already contains billions, billions of stars. And there are billions upon billions of galaxies in the universe which contain 
billions upon billions upon billions of stars na yung iba, kasi laki ng Canis Majoris na ang pwedeng magkasya, ay 9.3 billion suns. And all of these heavenly bodies na hindi natin mabilang, hindi natin ma-measure, lahat ng yan ang sabi sa Psalm 33 and verse 6, By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and all the host of them by the breath of His mouth. Hindi man naglift ng finger si God, ang ginawa lang niya ay huminga, at ang nangyari, lahat ng mga galaxies na yan, na billions upon billions with billions upon billions of stars, they came into existence. And all of these innumerable heavenly bodies, ang sabi sa Psalm, 147 verses 4 to 5, He counts the number of the stars. He calls them all by name. Kahit sa sobrang dami nila, God is able to identify them by name. At kahit parang sumasabog na ang ating isip sa sobrang laki ng universe, we have to understand and we have to realize that the universe, it's, it is God's creation and it is finite. Mayroon siyang hangganan. Mayroon siyang katapusan. Pwede siyang sukatin. But the love of God is infinite. And why is this important? Kasi pag nalaman natin na ang love pala ni God and God Himself is infinite, Anuman ang dumarating sa buhay natin na challenges, anumang problema na ating dinadala, we can have hope. Because our God is infinitely and immeasurably powerful by the word of His mouth. Kanyang nakreate ang buong universe na ang laman nito hindi man kayang ma-imagine ng ating isip. I hope the lyrics of this song will inspire you. It says, There is no problem too big. God cannot solve it. There's no mountain too tall. God cannot move it. There is no storm too dark. God cannot calm it. And there's no sorrow too deep. He cannot soothe it. If God can create not only the planet Earth, but the whole solar system and all the billions of galaxies and the billions of stars in them. Kung kaya ng Diyos na gawin niyang lahat, kaya ng Diyos na tulungan tayo, saklulohin tayo, anuman ang pinagdadaanan natin sa ating buhay. But now you may ask, Sino naman ako para pansinin ng Diyos? Siguro kaya alam ng Panginoon yung, yung mga name ng mga stars kasi ang lalaki nila. But who am I para pansinin ng Diyos? In Matthew chapter 10, verses 29 to 31, ang sabi, Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin? And not one of them falls to the ground apart from your Father's will. Walang bumabagsak dyan na kahit isang ibon na hindi napapansin ng Diyos. Your very hairs of your head, they are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. Yes, nasa pansin ng Diyos yung pinakamalaking star. Pero kahit yung bilang ng buhok natin sa ating ulo, Alam na alam ng Diyos kung ilan. Ganyan yung concern ng Diyos sa atin. Ganyan yung pag-care ng Diyos sa atin. Yan ang love of God na, na pwede nating maranasan. Kaya pag dumarating yung panahon na may nakakaalala pa kaya sa akin, mayroon pa kaya nagmamahal sa akin, let this verse inspire you also. It's found in Isaiah chapter 49 and verse 15. Can a woman forget her nursing child and have no pity for her own son? Surely she may forget, yet I will not forget you. Almost impossible na na ang loving mother makalimot sa kanyang pinapasuso na anak. Pero kahit pwede ang mangyari, ang sabi ng Diyos, 
it is never, never going to happen in so far as God is concerned. Walang panahon, walang pangyayari, at walang sandali na pwede kang malimutan ng Diyos. And you know why? There is an important reason to that. There was this uh, boy and girl, nagmit sila, na-attract masyado yung boy, and they want, and he wants na magkita sila ulit. Kaya ang sabi ng boy, can I have your number? Sabi ng mabae, sure. So binigay yung number, sinulat naman ni boy yung number sa kanyang palad. And so he was very happy going home, matatawagan niya ulit yung girl. But on his way home, umulan ng malakas, talagang bumaha pa. And what happened to the number on his hand? Nabura. Kaya wala na siyang way ngayon na matawagan ulit yung, yung girl. Kasi yung number ay nakasulat lamang sa kanyang palad. I want to tell you this moment. Your name is not written on God's hand. Hindi nakasulat. Ang sabi sa Isaiah 49 and verse 16, I will not forget you. See, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Ang pangalan mo, hindi nakasulat sa palad ng Diyos. Nakaukit siya sa palad ng Diyos. Kaya kahit anong earthquake, kahit anong storm, kahit anong hurricane, kahit anong flood, kahit anong pandemic, kahit anong COVID-19 crisis, you are always in the heart of God, in the mind of God, because your name is engraved on the palms of His hands. Ito yung pag-ibig ni God na everlasting. Ito yung pag-ibig ni God na it never fails. Ito yung pag-ibig ni God na infinite na gusto niya na maranasan mo. Kahit magpakalayo, layo ka pa sa Diyos ng pinakamalayo na kaya mong humiwalay sa Kanya. When you turn around, His face is right there in front of you. Bakit? Because every step you you take away from Him, He follows you. That is how unfailing the love of God is. An elderly person was asked by some uh, young theologians, ang tanong sa kanya, Sir, ano ba ang part ni God sa buhay? Anong part ni God sa salvation? At ano yung part natin? Ang sabi nung uh, elderly person, My part is to run away from God. And God's part is to run after me. And I thank God, He has caught me. Kaya sa panahon na you're feeling downcast, you're feeling depressed, you're feeling confused, fearful, o kaya worried, remember, God made you to love you. You were created and you are here for the greatest and most amazing purpose of all, to be loved by God and to enjoy His love above all, a love that is infinitely far beyond anything you can ever imagine. I hope you are blessed with this study. I'll see you in our next lesson.